What's up ladies and gentlemen, Hockey Time here, back with another video, and today we're going to talk some fantasy hockey. Uh, I wanted to give you guys 10 of my picks that I think are going to be good value picks or good sleeper picks for the upcoming NHL season. I am going to be using my ESPN Fantasy Hockey League as a baseline for these picks. Um, I do run a 16-team league, so it's a little bit larger than a lot of other fantasy hockey leagues that you'll probably be participating in. But again, just wanted to provide you guys some content on fantasy hockey for those of you that do play. Um, and again, I think these picks... Not really any names that are going to blow people away, but some good value picks depending on where you're picking them up in their drafts. Um, just for some context as far as scoring goes, my league does some pretty standard scoring points. Um, and then we have goalies weighted a little bit more highly than some of our skaters. And then we have only blocked shots as a defensive category. We don't use plus minus, no hits, none of that. So some context there for you guys on my mindset behind why I made some of these picks. But yeah, let's get started. So this list is in no particular order. I'm going to give you guys six forwards, two defensemen, and two goalies that, I again, I think are good value, good sleeper picks going through your drafts. Um, so the first player on this list is going to be Elias Lindholm of the Calgary Flames. Uh, last season played all 82 games, had 42 goals and 40 assists. Um, I'm thinking of grabbing him somewhere between rounds two and four, depending on where I am in my draft order and where he falls. Um, I think one of those players that is not, no one expects to be in the top 10, top 15 of the league by any means, but as you get into that second, third round, again, depending on the size of your league, could be a really solid value pickup. He's still going to be on that first line in Calgary, probably going to be playing next to Jonathan Huberdeau, is going to be feeding him the puck all season long. Um, and I think has the potential to match his production from last season, maybe even increase on it a bit. So we'll see what he's capable of, but I do like him as a very high end value pick. So the next player on this list is going to be a pretty interesting one to watch in Matt Boldy of the Minnesota Wild. Um, I have him going somewhere between rounds 5 and 7. Last season had 47 games, 15 goals, 24 assists, so some moderate production, um, but his rookie year in the NHL. This season, hopefully closer to a full year worth of games. Uh, I'm going to be playing on the second line for the full year, probably next to Marco Rossi, which will be a pretty fun uh, young tandem to watch, but I think the Wild are going to need him to step up his role if they want to find success this year after losing Kevin Fiala, and I think he is capable of filling some of those those points that are lost by losing Fiala. So I think he's going to be a good player to add, again, a, a value pick somewhere in rounds five to six, maybe even seven for me, depending how far he falls, but definitely a good add if he's available later in your drafts. Next player on my list is one that I'm holding to a similar standard to that of Matt Boldy for this upcoming season, and that's Martin Natchez of the Carolina Hurricanes. Uh, 78 games last season, 14 goals and 26 assists. A bit of a down year by his standards, but I do expect him to bounce back this year. I have him going somewhere between rounds 5, 6, and 7 for me in my draft. Um, still playing with Sveshnikov and Kotkaniemi this season, so I think he has the potential to bounce back. Those are two very explosive, exciting guys when they're both on their game, and I think if all three of them are on their game, he has the potential to see a real boom in production this year. So again, I think a good value pick if he's available. Another one of those guys that's not going to get a ton of attention from managers in their leagues. So I think he should be available in those early to mid rounds and should be a pretty solid pickup. The next player on this list is one that I'll be pretty interested to see where he falls in a lot of leagues drafts. Um, some owners might take him above Matt Boldy and Martin Natchez. Others might take him below. It all kind of depends on where you think his production is going to fall this upcoming season in a new role with a new team, and that is Dylan Strom of the Washington Capitals. Going to be filling in for Nick Backstrom's absence. Um, last season with Chicago had 69 games, 22 goals, 26 assists, so some pretty solid production on a not-solid team. Um, excited to watch what he can do in Washington. They have a lot of options on his wings, whether it be Mantha, Oshie, etc. He will likely be bouncing back and forth a bit for the beginning piece of the season, with Lars Eller battling for that second spot, but I'd expect by Christmas, maybe even Thanksgiving, that that's his role permanently. Um, I'm excited to see what he can produce. For me, he's going to go somewhere between rounds four and five. Again, I think pretty highly of him. I think on a better team, he's going to increase his production quite a bit. I don't expect him to be a point per game by any means, but I think somewhere maybe in that 65-point range through a full 82 games is more than reasonable for him on a better team. So, yeah, for me, somewhere in round four and five again. I think in a lot of leagues, you can probably get away with drafting him even lower than this. But for me, with this big of a league as I'm in, I think that he'll be available there, and I think he'll be a pretty solid pickup. For the next player on this list, we are going to head up to Buffalo and discuss Dylan Cousins. Uh, last season, played 79 games, 13 goals, 25 assists. For me this year, I'm thinking of taking him somewhere between round 6 and round 8. Um, one of those guys on Buffalo that's probably going to be all over their lineup, but should be pretty productive regardless of where he is. Wouldn't surprise me if he hit the 50-point mark this season. 
um, and is one of those guys that I think Buffalo thinks very highly of, and I think they should. Um, really young kid, just going to keep seeing improvement as the seasons go on, but I do expect him to be an increase in production this year, and I think he's going to be a good value if you can get him later in the draft. Another guy that isn't going to get a lot of attention from league managers. If people aren't doing their research, probably not going to pick him up until much later in the draft, so if you can snag him early, I think he will be a good value. So the last forward on this list is going to be Mason Marchment of the Dallas Stars. This might be the biggest gamble of all six of the forwards on the list. Last season only played 54 games, but did have 18 goals and 29 assists, so a lot of production out of him with the Panthers last season. This year on Dallas should be slotted in on Tyler Sagan's wing, um, likely playing with someone in the likes of Den uh, Dennis Garianov. So a lot of potential for very high production there, but depending on how those two guys play, there's also potential for a pretty steep downside. Um, for me, again, it depends on where he falls in my draft, where it looks like the attention's going in my draft, but I might snag him as early as rounds five or six, but again, one of those guys that's not going to get a lot of attention from league managers, you could definitely get away with picking him up much later in your drafts, especially if you're in a smaller league. If you're only an eight or ten team league, Marchman's definitely going to be a guy that's available later that's going to provide you a lot of value late in the draft. So keep an eye on him, keep an eye on where your managers are looking in the wingers, um, and if you think he's going to get taken... Might be a guy worth picking up a little bit earlier than you may have hoped, but should provide a lot of production as long as the Stars keep up their offensive pace this season. On to the defensemen for this list, and just a quick note for you guys. The defensemen are going to be the position that have the most variability from league to league, so every league does things a bit differently. You may get more points for hits, for block shots, plus minus um, defenseman points in general. Um, my league, we limit it pretty much to just their base scoring, and then again, block shots, so... Every league's going to be different. If your league provides more points for scoring, keep that in mind. More points for defensive-minded play, keep that in mind as well. Uh, the first defenseman on the list is going to be Neil Pionk of the Winnipeg Jets. I'm thinking of taking him somewhere around 13-14. Um, last year, 77 games played, only three goals, but 31 assists. So some decent point production out of him in a year that the Jets really didn't play all that well. So I would expect the Jets as a whole to do better. I'd expect his production to go up a bit. He hasn't provided a ton defensively despite being a defenseman. But he is capable of providing some decent point totals, I think. So again, not going to be your first defense pick by any means, but maybe your second or third could provide some value there if he's available later in your drafts. The other defenseman on my list for you guys is going to be Evan Bouchard of the Edmonton Oilers. Um, looking at taking him somewhere between rounds 10 and 12 this year. Last year played 81 games, 12 goals, and 31 assists. So some decent production from a relatively younger guy. Um, provides a pretty strong all-around game. Obviously has the production there. Does a lot physically, defensively, block shots, kills a few penalties. So a pretty solid pick all around. Um, again, for me, I don't know that he's going to be a number one guy. It kind of depends on where the rest of my league managers are, um, how early they pick their defensemen. But again, we have to tap into depth pretty early in our drafts. So he could be a number one defenseman on, on a team. I don't know that I'll want to get him there, but if he's available as a second defenseman, I'll probably be looking to pick him up again somewhere between rounds 10 and 12. So on to the goalies for the last two players on this list. Uh, for my league, goalies are a, a huge challenge. Um, again, this season we have 16 teams in our league. Last year we had 14, and then years prior to that we had 12. So even when it was a 12-team league, it was tough to find the correct position to draft goalies in. You don't want to jump the gun and draft a goalie way too early when you're missing out on valuable skaters. Um, but you also don't want to wait too long, miss out on a, a bona fide number one guy, and then struggle for a lot of the year depending on how your goalies are scored. And again, this is where every league's different. For us, goalies are weighted a bit more heavily. Um, that's my bias. I'm a goalie. I manage the league, so I get to do what I want. But um, yeah, it's going to be tough with 16 teams. Essentially... Every league manager can get two quote-unquote starting NHL goalies, right? But we know that some teams are going to cycle through two, three, four, maybe even more goalies throughout the season. There's going to be starting goalies that play 60-plus games. There's going to be starting goalies that play 43 games and are considered a starting goalie. So um, a lot of flexibility here, a lot of variability, again, depending on how your league structured, scoring settings, etc., uh, so the first goalie on this list is going to be John Gibson. Now, I know a lot of you guys are probably rolling your eyes at this already, but just hear me out. So last season, not the best for him. 56 games played, a 3.19 goals against, and a 904 save percentage. However, the Ducks did improve this offseason. We've seen in years past what John Gibson's capable of. I do think we're going to see a bounce back from him this year. So I'd expect him to play around that same number of games. I think 56 games is pretty safe. He has a solid backup in Anthony Stolarz. 
And Lucas just all through the preseason games he's played so far has looked pretty good, so we may see him in a few NHL games this year. But he's not going to be one of those guys that's overworked. He's not a UC Soros. He's not a Thatcher Demko. He's not playing 65, pushing 70 games. His workload's going to be reasonable. He should be able to stay healthy. And if that's the case, I think the Ducks, with their improvements, should be able to provide enough wins that John Gibson can provide you a lot of value as your starting goalie. Again, this depends on the size of your league. If you're an 18 league, you might not have a real need to draft John Gibson, but if we're looking for guys that have solid later round value, Gibson might be a good guy. Um, as far as where I'm picking him round-wise, this is a complete guess. I have no idea where the rest of my league managers are going to look to start picking up goalies. I've never been the type of guy to pick up you know, the Andre Vasilevsky. I'm not going to be getting Shesterkin. Um, I try to look for those value goalies and then quickly get a second goalie, and that's tend tended to work out well for me. So I put round 11 to 13 on my notes here. It all really depends on where the rest of my league's drafting goalies. If they draft pretty quickly, I might try to snag someone like John Gibson in that round, but if they wait a bit longer, then I'll be pushing him further down my draft list. But again, there is a lot league to league, and we'll see what the rest of my league managers do. The final player on this list, and arguably the biggest gamble on the list as well, is going to be Anton Forsberg of the Ottawa Senators. Um, again, spitballing rounds, I put 17 to 19. Completely depends on where goalies are getting drafted. Uh, last year played 46 games, 2.82 goals against, and a 9.17 save percentage. The reason I think he's such a big gamble is because the Sens brought in Cam Talbot this offseason, so which one of those two guys is going to take over the starting role there in Ottawa? Um, as far as the scoring in my league goes, any goalie that's above a 900 save percentage is going to get you positive points, and then bonuses for wins, shutouts, etc. So Forsberg, for me, is a guy that I think could very well take over the starting role by the end of the season. And given Ottawa's defense group, it wouldn't shock me if he faces a lot of shots. So if he can maintain those numbers from last year, especially that save percentage, keep me above 900 and face and stop the majority of those shots, he's going to be picking me up a lot of points as a very late round goalie, another one that maybe not a lot of league managers are going to be thinking of drafting. Um, so if I can get him in those later rounds, I'm a very happy camper. Um, for you guys that are in smaller leagues, maybe not the best guy, you know, if you're an eight-team league, you got the top 16 goalies to pick from, right? So if I'm in an eight-team league, then maybe I bump John Gibson to my second goalie, right? Um, I don't know that you'll need to pick up Anton Forsberg. He's definitely someone I'd watch on waivers if you're in a much smaller league. But for anybody that's, I'd say, even a 12-team or, or larger league, Forsberg's one of those guys that you can pick up as one of your goalies. Watch how the season progresses. See which one of the two of them is playing more games. And if he has good numbers and is playing more games than Cam Talbot, then you made a good draft choice. So that's going to be it for my list of 10 fantasy hockey sleepers for this season. Leave a like if you guys enjoyed the content. If you want to see more hockey content just like this, feel free to hit that subscribe button. It is free. And let me know your thoughts in the comment below. I want to hear who you guys think is going to be that sleeper for your league. There's a handful of guys every year that come in and completely change the way the league's played, whether it be someone we expected to have a big season or a no-namer that comes out of nowhere and completely changes who wins and who loses. Um, so yeah, give me your thoughts below in the comments. I do plan to record the first Hockey Time podcast this weekend, so keep an eye out for that coming out sometime next week. Um, stay tuned for more content. Thanks, as always, for watching, you guys, and have a good one. See ya.